Hello. You are listening to the Carol Connection. With your host, Jerry Carol. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Carroll Connection. I'm your host, Jared Carroll, here to bring you guys another great episode. So unfortunately today, I had a guest scheduled, but we had to reschedule due to some issues, and to be honest, kind of expect that going forward, especially with all the COVID stuff starting to surge again, and I really want to do face-to-face podcast episodes, but with the way things are, it might not be possible, and... I might have to do more solo episodes, and that is okay. That's something I want to try out, and like like I'm doing right here, I'm recording. I'm trying something new, and we'll see if this works, and you know, fuck it. Sometimes you got to do that, but it's been a long week for me, and this episode is something that I feel like I need to do personally because on Tuesday, November 10th, 2020, I lost my grandfather, James Carroll Sr., who appeared on episode two, and I'd be lying to y'all if I didn't say my heart fucking hurts. Everything inside me hurts. But you know, I'm so fucking grateful that I have the podcast episode with him, and to hear his voice, God. The amount of times I listened to that episode since Tuesday, I couldn't even count. I made a video on my personal Instagram, and it's Jared M. Carroll, if anyone wants to check that out, but I took a clip of that episode, and his message was so clear, so powerful, so inspiring. Take a chance. Take a chance. If you're doing something you don't like, take a chance. What do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose By staying in a a position that you are uncomfortable, you don't like, or whatever it is, take that chance. He talked about he had only really one regret was he didn't take enough chances. And I think a lot of people can learn from that. I think a lot of people can take some information from that and just be like, yo, maybe I should take that, that leap of faith, you know? And especially a time like now, there's so much uncertainty in the world. Like, I'm not saying go start a business because that might not be the most financially best decision, but... Maybe start planning towards something like that. Maybe start a YouTube channel. Start a podcast. Whatever you want to do, start researching and do it. If you want to lose like fucking 10, 15, 20 pounds, start working out. Start dieting. Go after it. Use this time. We are never going to get a time like this ever again or a year like this probably ever again where we can't really do much. We're kind of being forced and possibly it's probably going to be another lockdown, but that's okay. There's one thing I do want to say, and it sucks because I, I'm so grateful for that one episode, but I wanted a second episode so bad. My heart hurts that I never got that second episode. COVID sucks. Cancer sucks. Cancer fucking sucks. Watching my grandfather deteriorate, like his health-wise, over the past year, hurt. Hurt a lot. I saw him last Friday. I saw him last Friday. Seeing him just like like that, he was in a lot of pain. But he was surrounded by family. And that makes my heart feel pretty good. That he got to go the way he wanted to go. Not many people can say that. He passed away Tuesday surrounded by family. In his own home. How many people can say that? To go on his terms. And one of his, um, I don't know if it was the hospice nurse or one of the nurses was like, he really handled him, himself and the diagnosis with such grace. Not many people can do that. Not many people can face death and accept it the way he did. And if you listen to episode two, he talks about that. He's like, what other way can I deal with it? It's inevitable. I'm going to pass on. I've lived a long life. I fought a great battle. When my time comes, it comes. But he's like, it's got to catch me. I love that clip. I love hearing him say, it's got to catch me. And because he didn't want to quit. He wasn't going to quit. That's powerful. Knowing he's not going to quit. He's going to fight it to the very end because he loves his family. He loves his life. And he loves being on earth, being a human being. 
if you can't take a message from that, I don't know what to tell you. Like, my heart hurts, though. It really fucking does. I was going through pictures, and, like, I was crying like a little baby. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to not be okay. I'll stress that so much, especially for the men out there. It is so okay to not be okay. Cry. Let it out. Show your emotions. It's not weak to show your emotions. It's not feminine to show your emotions. Showing your emotions is not feminine or masculine. It makes you human. I think people get confused of the notion of, I just want to be happy. My goal in life is to be happy. I don't think that's really realistic. Because if you're happy all the time, I just don't believe it. I believe that's probably toxic positivity. That's something I talked about with my therapist recently is in the world today, we have a lot of people pushing this toxic positivity of just be happy, be happy, be happy. That's not real. That's not realistic. Think about it. Most humans aren't happy all the time. Most humans aren't sad all the time. Humans are, what we're supposed to be is in the moment, content with what's going on in the full spectrum of all emotions. Think about it. You got to go through the, all your emotions to understand everything. You got to go through the lows to understand the highs and the highs to understand the lows. They balance each other out. It's part of being human. And if we just like accepted that and normalized feeling your feelings, like I say all the time, I think we'd be way better off in a society just going forward and communicating with one another and expressing how we feel about certain things without getting upset at people. Because I think people get upset when they see others expressing sadness, especially on social media. People think you're attention seeking. I think it's vulnerable. I think it's honest because everyone wants to show their best self, but no one really wants to show themselves at the lowest points. No one wants to show themselves when they're sad. And then people label that as attention seeking. That's fucking bullshit. That's honest. That's real. That's raw. Respect that. I think people get intimidated by people who know how to communicate and show themselves being upset, show themselves being angry. People are intimidated by that because they don't know how to react because they don't know how to deal with other people being in their feels or being sad or being upset. Most people don't know how to deal with that because they don't know how to deal with it in their own right, in their own person. So if we got to a place where we just accepted that and could understand everyone's valid in their feelings, like... I heard in a little bit of my family were talking about this. Um, He lived a long life and we shouldn't be that upset. To be honest, I don't really agree with that because yes, he lived a long life and yes, I'm thankful to spend as much time as I did with him, but I'm still sad. Hearing that doesn't make it any better. Knowing he lived a long, long life and was surrounded by love doesn't make me feel any less sad that he's not going to be here and he's not going to be in my life anymore. Yes, he's always going to be with me, energy wise, whatever you believe in. I know he's probably with me right now listening to this episode. And that was something I needed to do when I was looking at this week and whether I should record something or not. I wanted to. He was one of my biggest supporters. One of the first people I had on my podcast. I met with him, I think it was about a week or two before I really like started recording episodes. And I apologize if you guys have listened to that episode and I sound like I don't know what I was doing. It was my second episode, forgive me. But... Hearing his voice, like the way he talked about death and like the conversation we had was so easy. You could tell how much love we had for one another. And it's something that I could share with my kids and their kids can share with their kids. And like, it's something that can be passed down. His voice is going to inspire so many people beyond his life. I had so many of y'all reach out and say, that was my favorite episode that you did. I loved that episode. It was just real. You don't really get the chance to hear a conversation between a grandfather and a grandson. You get that inside scoop and like, man, I'm so grateful I got that episode. My heart hurts because I really wanted a second episode to kind of like recap and see. But COVID, COVID happened. He has immune disease. Like I couldn't see him. It wasn't really possible. Because we don't want to run the risk of getting him sick and shorting his life that he possibly had. So it sucked. He couldn't see a lot of his grandkids. He couldn't see a lot of his kids. It hurts, but in the final days, we were we gathered around. We were all wearing masks, sitting outside. And last Friday, was just seeing him happy, smiling to be surrounded by grandkids, his kids, in-laws. It's just, it was something to see. I'm glad he got to see almost every single one of us. 
And it really warms my heart that he was surrounded by so much love. And even with all the pain that he was feeling, and you could see it in his face, I remember him just saying on Friday, looking at the sky, it was beautiful. It was like 70 degrees outside. He's like, I'm just glad to be outside. I'm glad to be breathing fresh air. He was appreciating being alive, appreciating being a human being. And that's something we take for granted. We don't realize it until it's too late. But seeing that, that rawness, that openness, that vulnerableness, that was huge. That's something that's going to sit with me forever. I know a lot of people don't like to see people hurting, people sick, and all that stuff. And that's not the image they always want. Sometimes that's not the image I really want. Like, I hate having that image of a hurting friend, a grandparent, aunt, uncle, whatever. But the way he handled it inspired the fuck out of me. And I knew I just had to come on this podcast today and just record something. Record how I'm feeling. Be honest about myself. Because I remember... It was Tuesday when he passed, and we were kind of aware that things were heading towards this, and it wasn't really looking good, and I went to go get a haircut, and I saw my mom was calling me, and I knew right then and there he had passed away, right then and there, and my heart was already breaking, and I just, I put my phone away, got my haircut, looked at my text, my dad texted me, grandpa had passed away. I knew, I knew when my mom called, he passed away. I just wanted a moment just to like not feel that pain right then and there. Because I knew if I answer that call, my mom tells me that I'm bawling right on the spot. Because I got home and I cried. I cried and cried and cried. You can ask some of my friends that called me later that day. I, I was having a hard time keeping it together. To be honest, recording this episode is really hard for me right now. I'm fighting tears like... I miss him so much. I'm going to miss him forever. That's someone like that was there for everything. <laughs> for me being born, going to school, supporting me through sports, always at my sporting games. Man, you can't have a better grandparent than that that supports you through thick and thin. Even when like I was thinking about doing this podcast and putting myself out there and I wasn't getting a ton of support behind it originally and like I had doubts but he encouraged me, take take a chance, he says. Take a chance. Be different. It's okay to be different. I'll never forget the conversation we had before going to my cousin's football game. Because I wasn't working, I just moved back home, and he's giving me so much great advice and telling me his, about his diagnosis, some of the alternative medicines that he was using, and they were helping. A lot of those alternative medicines were helping, but you know what helped him the most, I think? His mental his attitude towards the diagnosis. He wasn't going to succumb to the disease. He was going to fight it to the end. He wasn't going to quit. And to be honest, that's so inspiring. Someone who doesn't want to quit. Someone who wants to live that bad. Because I think originally he was diagnosed, I think around April of 2019, if I'm correct. I'd have to go back to uh, episode two and check that to confirm. But I'm pretty sure it was April. And they didn't really give him much time to live. I think my grandma said last night, cause Thursday, uh, November 12th was his birthday. And we got together with the family, had cake in honor of his life. And I know he was with us then. He was probably smiling at peace. And it was a great time. But my grandma had said they were going to give him a few months to live. And he lived 19 months past the diagnosis. Doctors weren't expecting that. They weren't anticipating that. And for him to do that, man, that takes willpower. It takes guts to face that. I miss him so much. I'll keep saying that. I miss him so much. When we were all gathered there on Thursday for his birthday, it just felt like we were missing someone. We were missing him. My aunts, my uncles, some of my cousins, my grandma. But he's not there. I'm going to miss him forever. He's a part of me. I wouldn't be a Carol without him. There wouldn't be a Carol connection without him. It hurts. It hurts really bad to lose someone. Doesn't matter what age, it's not easy. 
I don't care what anybody says, it's never easy to lose a loved one. Yes, he was older. Yes, he had lived life. I understand. It doesn't take away from the pain, though. There's nothing anybody could say that will take my pain away. I have to cope. I have to learn how to deal with it. I'll have to heal. I preach healing all the time. It's going to take time, and I understand that. Healing is a long, long journey. I've lost a lot of family members. I've lost friends throughout my life. I've dealt with death a lot. And I haven't recently, so this is this one's really hitting home. Because I've gone through life so so much. And I've talked on other episodes lately about some of the stuff I've been dealing with in 2020 of failed relationships and heartbreak and things like that. So I've been in a lot of pain lately. And this one really hurts. They always say... You go through dark times so you could shine brighter. And it feels like I'm in a dark time right now. 2020 has been a brutal fucking year. A really brutal year. But you know, I feel a come up on the way. I feel the glow up. I know better things are coming. I just gotta be patient. I gotta work on myself. I gotta be better. I gotta heal. I gotta work on my emotions understand them, cope with the loss of my grandfather, and move on. You never really heal completely when you lose a loved one, but you learn how to be different. You learn to change. You learn to go on because there's nothing you could do to bring them back. They're gone. They're on to the next journey, whatever that is, whatever you believe, they're on to that next journey. So understanding that he's in a better place, he's no longer in pain, That makes me feel at peace and I'm comforted by that and I really hope people get something from this. I feel like I'm being very vulnerable. I'm being very raw on this episode and it's very fresh. It happened this week. I lost my grandfather this week. My heart hurts. It really hurts. I'm fighting tears so much and like I just want to keep it real for you guys like I'm going to keep doing the podcast. I'm going to keep doing things the way I want to do them. And because he would want me to keep going. He wouldn't want me to stop this. This podcast has become so therapeutic for me. And it sucks that I couldn't have a guest on this week. I really was excited for it. And I'm definitely going to have them on in the coming weeks. Hopefully if things allow it and guidelines allow it. And we'll keep going with that. But... In the future, I'm going to have to start learning how to do more solo episodes. And that's something I want to do is recording in front of a camera and editing it and putting out clips for you guys. And this is something that I'm looking forward to doing in the new chapter going forward because we are coming up on one year of the podcast. I am so excited to bring you guys some of the content that I have planned going into 2021. There's a lot of great things to look going forward, but I am in pain and I'm acknowledging that. I'm being, like I said, I keep saying it, vulnerability is so huge. Expressing your emotions, feeling your feelings. It's okay. It's okay to do those things. We want to fight it so much. We want to hold on. We want to be strong. But you don't have to be. It's okay to experience the full range of emotions. It's natural. It's human. Accept that. Be that. Because that's the only way you're going to learn how to heal and cope and grow is to go through this full spectrum of emotions. And with that, I am coming to the end of this episode. And I really hope you guys gained something from this episode. I just want to put out some content. And I did this honestly because I needed to. I needed to record something. I needed to like get my thoughts out there because right now my head is spinning a million different directions and how I feel. And like, I wish I could say a million things to him. There's so many things I wish I could say. There's so many things I wish I could have, like, done with him. But sometimes life happens and things go the way they go. Like they say, everything happens for a reason. I firmly believe that and I know he's in a better place. I know he's happy. I know he's not in pain, which is good. And my family really appreciates, excuse me, appreciates all the condolences, all the love that you guys have shown. And I personally appreciate everyone that has reached out and supported the podcast, supported that episode, and took the time to share that episode. 
Like, you don't understand how much that means to me to try to get the word out on his episode because he wasn't super tech savvy. He didn't have the chance to really promote himself and, like, get his voice heard. So for you guys to do that for me and for him means the world. I really hope episode two inspires some of you guys. And if you haven't checked out, please check out episode two with James Carroll Sr., my grandfather. Amazing episode. And I really hope his words inspire beyond his life and I hope you guys get something from that but wrapping up when you're in the podcast it's coming up expect great things I'm really excited about what's to come and if you want to check out those episodes check them out at the carolconnection.simplecast.com also Apple Podcasts Spotify all the major listening platforms so until next time guys bye bye